Priyanka Chopra said, it's the dream of every girl to feel like a princess, at least for one day. And that's on their wedding day. Of course, because that's a D-Day, right? I mean, it's one of the most important day of all. And you know what's the most important part of that day? It's the wedding dress. But let's take a second and think about it here. What is it with us ladies and our wedding dresses? I mean, you don't see guys going ballistic about it ever since they are five, you know. But us ladies, we do. I mean, we've grown up listening to fairy tale stories about princesses in their castles. You know, the prince coming along, the big lavish wedding, and the happily ever after theory. But is it really the most important dress of all? Well, I guess it is. For most of us, at least. And for me. Well, it always was and will always be. So when Van came along with that gorgeous wedding ring, which he bought, by the way, using all of his savings, just after a few months of dating, I thought to myself, I think he's losing it. <laughs> well, he was supposedly head over heels in love with me, you know, from Brook of Roses and delivered to the office all the time. To Saturday morning, early homemade croissant made me feel like the most special one at every opportunity he got. And the way he used to look at me was as if his life depended on me. <laughs> Van made it perfect. It was all perfect. And we started planning our wedding. Yay! Happy days, as he would say. Our wedding bands were here, the cards were on their way, and the most important, my wedding dress was here. It was a gorgeous ivory colored dress, and I kept playing that scenario over and over again in my head all the time, every time. Do you know which scenario, right? Yeah, the me walking down the aisle scenario. And I also thought, geez, how am I gonna dance in this though? Warren Buffett, the investing legion, says, one of the most important decisions you're going to make in your life is the person you choose to marry. And I couldn't agree more with him here. In the past, if you're not married by 25, especially for a lady, boy, you're doomed. <laughs> well, statistically speaking, still being single at 34, simply means I just avoided my first divorce here. <laughs> you know? So when Vance and my turn came, we were both ready to hold hands and cross that bridge. Or at least I thought we were. Van is someone who appeared to be very composed, working as a QS in the construction industry Known to be the perfect son, brother, friend, you know, playing the role of a normal man in today's society. But for me, for me that was my buddy. That was the man I was going to marry. Someone who would look upon to me for every little thing and who promised to have my back, no matter what. And my friends, they would never say, they would never stop saying how lucky I was and how perfect he was for me. For which is still a big question mark to many of them because they were like, what exactly happened to you guys? I mean, you guys were perfect. So, what led Van into making Intentional choices and decisions that led to jeopardizing our union and my trust. What leads a seemingly happy and complete man into subscription to Tinder Gold?
and many other dating apps on the digital world. To massage parlors with prostitutes during his working hours. To buying lingerie for multiple women. To strip clubs on Friday nights. To pornography. I mean, you name it, the list goes on. Why? Questions to which I will never ever have answers to. Many times, many times when this happens to us, most of us think, geez, man, why? Why? Well, what if? What if I told you today that the way you handle this is in fact the most important? That the pain that we get through this betrayal is not as important as how we first choose to take it in, which means to acknowledge that the pain is there. Yeah, I see you, I see you, I'm hurting. Yes, it's fine. Secondly, you take time for yourself. And third, how you choose to ultimately project it to the world. Because shit is going down, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so when his lies caught up to him, that's what he said. He called it a mistake. He said, oh, I'm sorry. And ultimately, I shouldn't be cancelling the wedding. You know it all now, Nusha. Take me back. Choose us instead of the anger. And my favorite line comes from, a, from someone who, was, who played a prime role in this story all along. She said, Ah, isn't the, man, isn't, the, isn't the genes of man to cheat? I mean, come on. Not all men cheat. I know some wonderful men out there who value authenticity and fidelity. You know, I was thinking to myself, like, if I was Jesus, <laughs> or if I had Alzheimer's, maybe then I will just, you know, forgive and forget. This is the kind of banter, ladies and gentlemen, if you want, that goes through the mind of someone who's just been cheated on after buying her dream dress. So please forgive me for my politically incorrect coping mechanisms here. Ladies and gentlemen, this happened exactly a year and two weeks ago. As I stand here today, knowing fully well that I am not the first woman, or human being for that matter, to be cheated on, be it romantically in my case, eh? Or otherwise. So I am not at all special. Funny thing is, when I told a few of my friends, you know, I'm doing a TED talk, and that's the title of my talk. <laughs> we were like, what? <laughs> Look at you, you're a business development manager. You are into investment. I mean, women, talk to us about investment and business development, yeah? Anything, anything but this guy. <laughs> Let me stress on this fact here. This story is not of Van. This story is not at all about him. This story is for all of us who's experienced this pain. This story is for everyone who's actually going through this pain. So what do we do when we feel this pain? Do we let it define us? Or do we actually take charge of it? And get to know actually the real us, who we are? And just, you know, turn the game around? Because us human beings, we've been gifted with this superpower 
of free will and decision making, which means, which simply means, just like we want to drink Coke or Pepsi for a change, it simply means we are capable of making decisions at every instance of our life. It's our choice. And we are, we are capable of making good ones and bad ones too. It's okay. You just have to forgive yourself for that. Shit happens, like we say. Dishonesty and cheating is not necessarily viewed with a particular contempt in our society. But as I experienced it in my case, it can have major, major implications on the other person's life, which can lead to them ultimately, literally taking their own life. In exchange for what though? Someone else's guilty pleasures and selfish interest? Listen, I'm not equating cheating to first degree murder here. <laughs> but I'm telling all of you here today, please, please do not vote for me as a legislator or else half of this country is going to jail if this If my unpopular views on this crime at least is confirmed as law. J.K. Rowling, you know the Harry Potter lady? She says something that connects to my core. Rock bottom became the solid foundation on which I rebuilt my life. So what do we do when we hit rock bottom? What do we do when someone breaks our hearts and just takes away our dreams and everything else with it and just goes, boop, they're gone? What do we do? I mean, apart from him, you still got a life on your own, right? I mean, you still got responsibilities. That was your mom and dad, friends, family, neighbors. And most importantly, guys, work. My work defines me. And my colleagues will confirm the same. I'm known for my work ethics and my dirty jokes all day long and my super loud laughter and my energy is always at peak. But work is work, right? You can't always tell people what's going on in your private life. So you've got to put on that happy face, go to work, deal with your meetings, have lunch with your colleagues, pretend it's all fine. And make sure your email writing is not showing your emotions. That's very important. <laughs> you know? You've got to, like, take it as a boss and just say, you know, I've got this handled. Even though if your life is falling apart, you, you don't have a choice. You've got to do it. But it's just a matter of having, you know, take mustering your courage and go for it. It's an everyday battle. I'm not telling you guys it's easy, like hunky-dory, tomorrow is all good. No, it's an everyday battle. You've got to constantly work on it. But you've got to embrace, you've got to forgive yourself, you've got to embrace that inner warrior, for which I'm known for, by the way, these days. And just take your power back. The power that you gave to the wrong person, it doesn't belong to him. Just take it back. And this is exactly what I did. I snatched my power back and I stood firm on my ground. That's it. They say how a person treats you is a reflection of their true self. And their true self has got nothing, absolutely nothing to do with you. So I just simply chose not to let him and his idiotic decisions devastate me, my life, my future, most importantly, my career. So by choosing me, like he said, choose us, I chose me. I did this for me. I did this for my future kids, who in 10 years time will watch this video and will be like, oh my God, mom. I couldn't let myself down, and I'm telling all of you today, neither should you, guys. I've got myself for life, and that's the promise I made to myself when Dad left a few years ago. So in other words, this is my story, and I'm the hero.
You know, showing my vulnerability to the world today, it's a huge challenge for me. I reckon it's not everybody's cup of tea. But I chose to do this because if I, if by doing a TED talk about this entire thing, if I manage to make a tiny difference and inspire few people who have gone through this or who is going through something similar in their life, the whole idea behind it is just to help and make a difference. Because whether be it men or women, the pain is the same. And this is an inexplicable pain that we all go through. And usually when this goes down, there's no one to talk to, except, you know, psychologists, yeah, head doctors. <sighs> Maybe I'm thinking I should even start a relationship coaching practice while at it, because why not? <laughs> because why not, you know? Love, eh? Love? <laughs> the highest emotional investment of all. Now, trust. The ticket to freedom everybody craves for. Now, the million dollar question, which goes like, do you think I'm ever going to be able to trust again or regain the ability to ever love again? <laughs> ah, you bet. <laughs> Am I still looking forward to becoming a bride and look and rock that wedding dress I've always dreamt about? What do you guys think? Yes. Absolutely, it's a yes. Of course it's a yes. It's the biggest yes ever. All we need now, though, is a few gentlemen. <laughs> you know, the one who's got their shit together. No more frogs, eh? Maybe a few. We'll see. Single guys only, by the way. Prince Charming, I'm not worried about him. It's never been my priority. I'm sure he's on his way. And when it comes to trusting again, it will come. It will definitely come, just with the right man along. And yes, I'm very much looking forward to having a lavish Indian wedding this time in all its glory. One thing though, even if Prince Charming doesn't come along, there's one person, there's one person you're guaranteed to spend the rest of your life with. Absolutely not, my love. It's you. So just make sure you're in great company all the time. You know? And that has been my mantra ever since. Just on a side note, Van is the name that he uses when he's sexting. <laughs> so ladies and ladies, let's take note here, shall we? He has to love. He has to laughter, guys, and he has to happily ever after. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.